Wonderful. All right, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I uh, wanted to welcome you to our program today. I'm Gina, and I'm the coordinator of the Veterans Resource Center at Skyline College. Um, and for those that may not know, um, Skyline College is part of the San Mateo County Community College District in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and our district is made up of three colleges, uh, Skyline being one of them, College of San Mateo, and Kenyatta College. Each of the colleges in our district has a veteran center and a coordinator to help connect our students uh, with resources and services for veterans and military connected individuals. And we've been very fortunate to build strong partnerships with each of our community partners that are presenting today. All three have supported our district both in person and now virtually. And the partnership is actually even stronger now than ever. I'm excited that you have the opportunity to hear from all three organizations together in one event today. It's not often that you have the opportunity to do this. So I'm so excited to have all three here today. There will be resources highlighted that are local to the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as state and federal resource overviews. So we hope there'll be something for everyone. And now I invite CalVet's California Transition Program team to begin the program. Thank you. All right, well, thank you so much, Gina. That was a, um, a wonderful introduction. And um, we are so excited to be here. Um, my name is Jana Adams. I'm one of the um, training coordinators on the California Transition Assistance Program team here at CalVet. And we want to just welcome everyone here this morning. Um, we've got lots of really great information. So before we get going, I wanna just go over just a couple quick things. Um, a couple housekeeping items. Um, we ask that you utilize the mute function and also that you turn off your cameras. This is gonna help us with, with bandwidth and um, the speed of everything. Um, if for some reason you get kicked out, just go ahead and click on that link and come back and um, join in and we'll, um, we'll manually let you in. So it might take a minute, but we'll get you back in. Um, we have a um, packed agenda today. It's going to be um, just a lot of really great information. We've got the San Mateo County Veterans Service Office here. We've got two representatives from there today. And then we also have the VA Student Veteran Health Program here today. Um, and um, we're going to just give you guys a lot of great information. Um, we also sent you guys a PDF copy of the um, resource book that is available. So if you have any questions about that, um, please either give us a call or send us an email. A lot of the information that you're going to hear about benefits today can be found in that resource book or online. And we're going to show you how to access all of that. Um, and then we're also going to talk about the, um, the question and answer. Um, so if for some reason you um, need help um, asking questions, you just go, you hover on the top of your screen or on the bottom of your screen, you click on that chat function, and then you can ask any of the questions during the time of this webinar to either CalTAP questions or the person that is actually speaking. And then after each section, we're going to go through those questions um, and the person that can answer the question um, will answer it directly for you. And then again, if you have any further questions beyond that, at the end of the webinar, um, we'll have um, questions from any of the sections as well. So we can go over any of the, and any of the information over again. Okay, so um, a couple quick things too before we get going. Um, we wanna just give you guys some more information about just some, um, some slight differences between state, federal, county, and then some service providers. So um, we, these are all entities that all work together um, or they all, they all work for each other and by all working together side by side. So up at the top right there, you've got um, the federal VA. They're going to provide veterans um, with all federal earned benefits. Um, next under that, you've got the state level, which is us, which is CalVet. We're gonna go ahead and assist veterans um, that are residents in California. We're gonna help you access those federal benefits. And also we're gonna be able to offer you a lot of different um, state benefits that are available to you. And then below that, we have the county level. So this is where you have um, the county veteran service offices. And like I said, we're gonna have two county veteran service officers here today to give you lots more information, but they're gonna be able to give you um, information and give you access to more local resources and benefits that are there in your direct county. 
And then lastly, we have service providers. And these are going to be service providers that can um, give you more specialized services um, with things maybe like legal assistance, with claim assistance, things like that. So um, we just want to let you know we all do work um, side by side each other. That way we can help um, all the veterans and their families. Okay, so next up, um, we want to let you know um, that these are three different administrations under the Department of Veterans Affairs. And Kathleen is going to give you a lot of information on this, so I don't want to give you um, too many details right now. Um, but just know that if you're working with, um, say, one administration um, and you're, you know, maybe filling out a form or something, um, it doesn't mean that the other administration is going to get it. So like I said, Kathleen is going to give you so much great information on all of this. Um, just wanted to give you kind of a snapshot on, um, as you can see, there's so many different programs that um, everybody offers. So and you can see um, CalVet is on the other side with all these different programs. And we're going to go over a lot of those programs a little bit later in the webinar today. Okay, so next up, we have um, the County Veterans Service Office from San Mateo here. And um, we're going to have Ed talking, and then um, we'll be able to an answer some questions um, a little bit later. So whenever you are ready to talk. Okay, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, Nick Erickson, uh, and I'm here with uh, Rich Jackson. We're both from the San Mateo County Veterans Services Office. Um, so a couple things. We are county employees. We work for the County of San Mateo. Although we're accredited through CalVet to assist veterans in uh, pursuing uh, their claims and advocating on behalf of veterans. Um, but we are county employees. And I think one of the key things I would want to differentiate in terms of our role and looking at all the different folks that are here is that we don't work for the VA. We work for you, the veteran, or the veteran's family member in helping you access the benefits that are available for you through the VA. All right, so next slide. Awesome. So we provide veterans with a number of things, um, the least of which is free benefit information. We can assist you in, in understanding all the different benefits that are available for you, not just at the VA level, but even locally. Um, our office it partners with a lot of local veteran services providers and a lot of VA providers. Our goal is when you come in, for us to sit down with you and actually kind of assess your needs and then create a roadmap, if you will, on how to best access the benefits that will help you address those needs. Um, so one of the key points I think that we wanna make is that veterans benefits are not, there's no slots for veterans benefits. And I hear that a lot from veterans they talk about, um, well, I don't wanna take another veteran's slots. There are no slots. Uh, the, the benefits that are available to veterans are available to veterans. The amount of money that's available for veterans is dependent on the number of veterans that are asking for assistance, right? So I think that's important because veterans benefits come from the federal government and we actually are able to draw down a significant amount of benefits for California veterans. But that all starts with veterans reaching out to us, talking to us, asking for assistance and then us being able to help them. Next slide. So list of some of the uh, key benefits that we help with. Um, we do talk about benefits counseling. We'll sit down with you. We'll find out more about your service. We'll talk to you about the different benefits that are available. Um, again, we have, we have a very established network of partners. Um, a lot of times a veteran will come in with a multifaceted set of issues they got or challenges they're facing. Everything from, you know, um, housing security, food security, uh, trying to get access to VA healthcare, assistance with issues, both physical and mental. Um, we're gonna put together a comprehensive plan to help assist you with accessing all those different benefits. Part of what we're gonna do is we'll actually file the claim on your behalf and help you uh, through that process. Another part of what we'll do is we'll make a, a, a direct connection with service providers that can help you with other aspects of issues that you need assistance with. Uh, but here's a list of some of the issues or some of the benefits that are available. Um, interestingly enough, a lot of these will actually come into play as you, as you grow older. So for example, if you're on the GI Bill now, your school is taken care of, and that's great. When you get older though, if you served and you become service connected, California has a program called the College Fee Waiver. That's a very popular program in our office. And that's a program that can help your kids go to any California state college or, or school for free. 
So our office is there for you. And it's not just a one-time stop, uh, one-time shopping experience. When you come in, we'll talk to you about all the different benefits, those that might apply to you now, and those that might apply to you in the future. And we're always gonna be here to help you in accessing those benefits. Next. Thanks. So one of the biggest um, programs that we work with at our office is, is Service Connection. Now, Service Connection essentially is any condition or injury or disease that is caused by, aggravated by, or first diagnosed during military service, as long as it's chronic in nature or has residuals. So if you served in the military and you hurt your knee in the military, and as a result of your military service, you have knee pain, that's compensable. Our job is to assist you in filing a claim for that. If you served in a combat theater, and as a result of the combat theater, there are you're, you're having a difficult time adjusting, or you may have a diagnosis of PTSD or any other sort of mental health issue. As a result of your service, we can help you with filing that claim. This is probably the biggest program that our office works on. And it's possible to file a claim by yourself. You can actually go to va.org and actually submit your own evidence, submit your own claim. You can work with a lot of different organizations. The choice is yours. What our office brings to the table is that we are accredited through CalVet and all the veteran services reps that we have are nationally accredited also. The veteran services reps, like you're gonna meet Rich in a little bit, have been working with thousands of veterans filing claims. And we've filed claims for World War II veterans, Gulf War era veterans, post 9-11, Vietnam, you name it. And we filed a broad array of claims. We have a lot of experience in what it takes to put together a comprehensive and complete package so that when your claim is submitted, you stand a high chance of getting awarded those claims. Uh, we're also very familiar with the VA process and we will assist you through the application process, submitting a claim, any sort of, of, of reassessment down the road or appealing a claim that's been denied. And um, just because you didn't start the claim with us and you've been denied, and you think maybe that you wanna take a look at it, we'll work with you also. Next slide. So one of the key things that's, that the first question that comes up when it comes to service connection is, is what's required for service connection. And this is why it's important to work with an organization that has experience putting together claim packages. So there's three things that, are, that, are, that need to be established when it comes to service connection and the VA. The first is that you served and that you're eligible to file a claim. The second is that you were exposed to, incurred, or were injured in the line of service. The next is that you have a current condition. And that current condition is diagnosed by your doctor. And finally, that we can establish a link or what they call a nexus between the current condition that you're dealing with and the injury, disease, or exposure or event that occurred in service. All that requires evidence. We work with you to put together that evidence and submit a complete cl and claim to the VA so the VA can review it and adjudicate it and determine the level of service connection that you have. And during our Q&A, if you have any questions about this, Rich, who has filed... I would say thousands rich of claims has helped um, on hundreds of appeals has helped with the development of legislation based on claims and denials and appeals that have occurred. Uh, we'll be able to answer a lot of very specific questions that you might have regarding service connected disability. Next slide. So how do we do it? So the first thing that we would do is ask you to reach out to us so we can sit down and start that conversation with you to find out a little bit more about you, your service, the issues that you're dealing with. And then based on that, again, there's a, there's a broad array of different services that are out there. Um, it, it really takes some time to sit down, review, review your service record, talk to you, find out a little bit more about what you need. And then again, put together that comprehensive plan of which service connection may be a portion of it or a part of it. Um, but again, the only way we're gonna be able to do that is to sit down and have that conversation. So you'll have our contact information here. Our services are absolutely free. Um, we're veterans in our office and we're here to help you. Next slide. 
So in a nutshell, we'll sit down with you. We'll talk to you. We'll put together a game plan. We'll talk about the evidence that needs to be gathered. And a combination of that evidence is, is evidence that we collect, that we request through the VA. Some of that evidence is information that you get first from the doctor. Evidence could be lay statements from you or your buddies that talk about what you did and explain how the issues you're dealing with today are connected to their service. Um, and, and, and again, that takes sitting down, going through your, your service records, the documentation you have, understanding what your current issues are, and again, putting together a game plan. Once we submit your claim, you'll be scheduled for what they call a compensation and pension exam or CMP exam. The VA sets that up. And essentially what they're doing is they're doing their own evaluation of you that one, validates that there is a current condition. And two, a lot of times will determine the severity of the disability of that condition. The amount of compensation you get will be dependent on the severity of the disability once you're approved. Another really important area that we work with folks on is discharge upgrades. And it's important to note that you don't have to have an honorable discharge to be service connected. You don't have to have an honorable discharge in order to be able to get access to VA healthcare. And I know there is a section on VA healthcare after this. But another part of this though, is that if you have what we refer to sometimes as bad paper, in other words, a discharge that is other than honorable, bad conduct, et cetera, there are avenues for us to assist you in getting those upgraded for various reasons, not just service connection, but also access to VA healthcare and counseling. Next, uh, next slide. Okay. So San Mateo CVSO is located in San Carlos. We're part of the Human Services Agency. Um, due to COVID right now, our office is closed to walk-ins, although we do schedule face-to-face -face appointments if, if that's what the veteran needs. But we do have uh, a person who is available uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. Our phone number, 802 5 um, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll give you our, our main office number in our last slide, um, but in all our contact information. But if you email or call us, what we can do is we'll talk to you, find out more about what you need, and we'll set up an appointment with, with one of our veteran services reps. You could do a phone appointment, you could do a Teams meeting, you could do a Zoom meeting. Again, if, 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 uh, if we think it, that it would be best for us to meet in person, we can set up an appointment to have you meet with us in person also. Um, if you don't live in San Mateo County, um, there are really this is what i would say google county veteran services officer and the county that you're in and a lot of times google will put, point you right to the person that you need to call and reach out to but if you're in san Mateo county reach out to our office next slide i'm sorry i can't even really see that slide so this this is just saying that you can click on the find a service provider at the top okay so this is a CalVet website, and that's another great resource if you go to that will be able to help you identify not only the benefits that are out there for you, but also how to connect with the veteran services officer. Um, and, you know, one of the things I want to close with before I, I really turn this over to, to Rich for the Q&A is, you know, I'm a veteran myself. I served uh, in the first Gulf War. And I got out and, um, you know, Interestingly enough, I wasn't aware that there were any benefits available for veterans, right? I didn't retire, I didn't do 20 years. So I assumed that, you know, once you're out, you're out. And so there were a number of um, things that came up for me, uh, not the least of which is I ended up breaking my collarbone while working full time and going to school at, at College San Mateo. And I didn't have health care and I didn't know where to turn to for health care. So it was a real struggle having to, to find the money to pay to get some treatment, some level of treatment. Um, the biggest issue was that, that you see, I, di I didn't realize I was a veteran at the time, right? It wasn't until somebody finally sort of explained to me that if you served in the military, you're a veteran, regardless of whether you served in a wartime era or not. And as a veteran, you have, you have access to a tremendous amount of benefits. <clears throat> the key is to reach out and find out what those benefits are. Um, and so if you have any questions whatsoever, if you served whatsoever and you have any questions, please go to the CalPET website, reach out to our office. Um, we, we're more than happy to sit down with you and talk to you. But I think, I think one of the biggest challenges for a lot of veterans is realizing that they are veterans at the end of the day and that they are entitled to um, quite a few benefits. So, and the next slide. So 
So this is the CalVet website uh, and their search portal. But again, for San Antonio County, we'll have all our contact information on our last slide. So you'll know what number you can call us at or email us at to get a hold of us and, and set up some time to talk. Okay, there you go. So our office is at 550 Quarry Road in San Carlos. Again, our, our, our building is closed to the public, uh, to walk-ins right now. So if you call us at 802-6598, what we can do is we can give you, you know, we, we can find a good time for you and we'll have one of our off veteran services reps give you a call or we can do a Zoom meeting if you're comfortable with that, whatever works for you and start that conversation. Um, you can email us at veteranservices-smc at smcgov.org. Our webpage has a lot of information on it and we continue updating it. Um, that's hsa.smcgov.org slash veterans or just type in County of San Mateo Veteran Services. And that'll be one of the first uh, links that pop up. Uh, another thing I want to share with you is that we we also have a, a County San Mateo Veterans Commission. And that's a group of veterans that are made up that um, look at veterans issues and act as an advisory committee to the Board of Supervisors. Uh, that commission tasked uh, a, a, a group by the name of Civics to put together a needs assessment update for the County San Mateos. And what they're looking for essentially is to better understand what the needs of San Mateo County veterans are. They're conducting a survey right now. And if you go to our website, that's hsa.smcgov.org slash veterans, you'll see a link and there's a link for veterans and there's a link for veteran service providers. Um, if you have a chance, go take a look. And the, the survey is anonymous. Um, it'll ask you some questions and, 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 and give you an opportunity to provide us some feedback on those issues that you need assistance with, those issues that you think um, are, are challenges or gaps, and in turn allow us to put the information together and actually present it to our, our, our commission, who in turn can advocate with the Board of Supervisors to put together programs to address those gaps. All right, next slide. Oh, I think I might have gone backwards, sorry. <laughs> There we go. All right. So at this point, what I was going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Rich Jackson. Um, Rich is a veteran services rep with our office. Rich has been doing this for years. I'll let him talk a little bit about his background. But Rich is Army. His son is in the Army. He has a lot of experience working with veterans of every era. Um, he's assisted with me with my claim. Um, he's a wealth of information. So this is a great opportunity if you have any questions. Um, Rich is a fantastic resource in terms of being able to answer those questions. Or, you know, if he thinks, hey, this is something that would be better, you know, we'd be better off having a quick conversation on the phone, let you know, and we'll set that up and we'll have that conversation. So Rich, I will let you take over from here. Thanks, Ed. So my name's Rich Jackson. Um, I've been with the County of San Mateo for over six years now. Um, was was previously working in the same industry. I've been doing this now for about 15 years. Um, it's pretty simple, you know, we help veterans for a living and that's what we do, you know? So it doesn't matter to me whether you were a cook or some special operator with 20 deployments. I, I've, I've, I've helped them all and, and that's what we do in our office. So the simple thing is um, before we get started in any conversations, we don't wanna get into any personal uh, stuff, right? So you don't wanna come on and say, hey, I, I, I need, uh, you know, this happened to me and, and this is what I need to do. So we can talk in broad terms of filing claims. We can talk in broad terms of, you know, whatever you need, but please, there, there's so many people on here and, and, and with all the privacy and, and HIPAA rules, you know, we don't wanna give you the uh, impression that you need to get specific about your own situation. Um, so please just, there, I'm sure that everybody has uh, questions that everybody else is going to want to answer as well. You know, you might have a question that 10 other people are going to ask. So if we just put it in broad terms, um, we can get that done. And, and y'all have the number for the office. Again, it's 650-802-6598. And quite simply, um, you know, that's what we're here to help you out with. And, and we'll find a way to communicate. We'll find a way to get her done. And uh, Big Allen, I hope you're feeling better soon. 
So who would like to get started with some questions? Hi, Ed, I did send you two questions um, to generalize them. They're just about um, moving your, your rating, taking it up a little bit higher. I, again, not going into any specific details like you mentioned. What would be the process of getting that rating moved from say 70% to 100%? So first of all, what we need to do is find out which uh, service connection issues you have. So at 70%, let's just say you're 50% or PTSD, 10% um, or you know, 20% for a knee and, and maybe some tinnitus in there, right? Tinnitus is 10% and that's it. There is no increase, right? Um, so that's off the table as far as getting any increase. The idea of a knee, 10% is any, any joints and, and painful or tender motion, you know, um, that's going to be 10%. So once you start going from 10 to 20 or 30, let's take a, a left knee, you're at 10% and your left knee is worse, you're in physical therapy, you know, and, and man, it just hurts so much more now. Well, hurting more is not necessarily filing for an increase. Going to physical therapy and finding out that you have a lack of range of motion now, right? That's something different. Um, if you're to the point where you need an assistant device, such as a cane, right? That's an increase. The, there's, there's things that limit the function of, you know, of your knee, and that's what's going to make an increase, not, not more pain. And, and that's the biggest confusion is people say, oh, it hurts so much more. And when you go to a comp and pen exam or we're, we're gathering our evidence and it says, man, I used to run a marathon every week, and now I can only run, you know, 50 miles a week. Well, you're, you might still have painful tender motion, but you're not gonna get an increase unless we get to the point where you have a limited range of motion, okay? Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder obviously is associated with treatment and, and how your overall uh, life is affected by it. So there used to be scores that we used to have and, and now they don't do those anymore. It, it's really based on um, how you're affected by post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's based on nightmares, it's based on interactions in public, it's based on a, a whole litany of factors. And the way we get there is through treatment that says, yes, these things are worse, right? Or this is what we're dealing with now. Um, you can file an increase for any service connection without medical treatment. The problem with that is, is that you're usually gonna get denied, right? So we want to work the case. We want to gather our evidence and submit it as a fully developed claim that says, I'm asking for an increase in post-traumatic stress disorder because I've been going back to treatment once a week again, and I haven't been in treatment in three years, right? And this is how I'm getting bothered. And, and for most veterans, um, you know, the political climate, the, the COVID, the isolation, all these things, um, you know, really bring up a lot of anxiety, right? And that anxiety gets uh, really increased in, in times of stress. So it's, it's pretty, um, you know, standard to say that if you had PTSD prior to all of this stuff and getting into your treatment is hard and getting on to, you know, see uh, your docs a little more difficult, you know, your groups are on Zoom now, so you know it, it's a little hard to interact for some people, um, you know, over Zoom, and you just don't get that personal contact, and and that's a huge factor. So there's a lot of things to talk about there. That's one way to get an increase, you know, uh, is is to gather the evidence and say this is how I'm affected now, and and anybody you talk to in our office is gonna say okay, let's let's gather this evidence and get the claim filed, right? Um, Another way to get an increase is, uh, I mean, I've got a guy in Australia, you know, how do you get, it? there's no VA in Australia, there, there's no VA, you know, in Thailand, you know, there's, there's places that you can utilize different documentation from, you know, your Kaiser doctor or 
you know, a, a, a social worker there in town, you know, that's coming to your place. There's, there's, there's a bunch of different ways. Don't, don't think that you can't do it. You know, just, just give us a call and let's figure it out. Okay. Let's, let's first figure out if you, if your evidence would meet the increase, you know, let's gather that evidence and, and get the claim filed and get you the help you need. Hey, Rich. Um, sorry. So I've got a question here. I want to run by you, but I also want to take a, a moment to, to, to add a, a couple of things here. First, there's a big difference between filing an original claim or filing your claim for PTSD the first time and filing a claim for ratings increase. The biggest hurdle to get over is a service connection piece, right? And one of the things that I think a lot of veterans find themselves, a predicament they'll find themselves in is that they'll wait until a condition becomes severe to file a claim in the first place. And again, we, the biggest hurdle to get over when, with filing a claim is creating that nexus, that connection back to the service that says, yes, what I'm dealing with today is a result of service because we, we have to gather evidence. And then that could, that, there's a tremendous, tremendously broad approach we can take towards getting that evidence. But typically what they're gonna say is, hey, did you complain about this while you were in the military? We need some documentation that shows that you complained about this in the military. And that way we can start drawing a connection. That's absolutely not necessary. We can find additional evidence, circumstantial evidence, oftentimes to establish that connection, but understand that process is time consuming, right? When you find yourself in crisis, that's a really, that's a burden on top of a burden. So if, if you're able to get service connected, even if you were say, get service connected at 0%, which is they acknowledge that, that, that you have an issue that's a result of your service or coincidental with your service, but that it's not at a level that's compensable. But let's say it gets worse, it's much easier to go in and say, hey, we wanna be reevaluated for this because we've already established service connection. So that's one of the things I, wa I wanna stress is that don't put off, if you think you have an issue, but it isn't really bothering you, yeah, my knee doesn't bother me that much, or you know, I can handle my PTSD or whatever the case is, don't put it off because if it gets worse, now you've compounded the issue because again, the biggest hurdle is getting you service connected. So. With that, I have another example, and I want to run this one by you, Rich, so you can respond. But we have, if if if, if an individual um, applied for or or, or filed a, a claim for an issue, right, and they were denied, right, because they, 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 they there was no the VA said there was no connection between the current issue and the service, right, but now as a result of legislation. That condition is covered under a presumptive list of, of illnesses. What would that individual do? They were denied well, first of all, before it's on the presumptive list, but now it's available on the presumptive list. Yeah, so, so typically um, those are associated with um, hazards of the environment, right? Environmental hazards such as uh, exposure to Agent Orange or uh, a lot of the uh, Iraq and Afghanistan exposures and burn pits and so forth. And, and the idea is, is you just, you know, give us a holler. We look up your old claim. We figure out what it was denied and why it was denied. Because if you got denied because they said they couldn't prove you were in Iraq or they couldn't prove you were in um, Vietnam, you know, uh, and those issues happened as well in uh, Korea up on the DMZ, you know, the idea is how do we get to the point where we find out what you were denied for and why we need to gather that evidence, we need to submit it as a claim. And the legislation will lead us to determine whether you if you filed for it before you might be entitled to retroactive compensation to the date the legislation was passed. Um, it might be that you're eligible at the time you file now. Those things are, are, are uh, depending on which, which legislation was adopted and, and when it was passed and, and what the condition was. But the baseline for any of those things is give us a holler, let's sit down and go over your individual situation, find out you know, exactly why you were denied. And most people don't understand that that is a key piece of information, right? And, and that will lead us to how we need to file again to be successful in your particular case.
Uh, so, well, so one of the other questions that we received is just some information on getting started with applying for the CalVet fee waiver for um, a student that's going to be graduating from college very soon. So people that are graduating from high school will be available, will, if, if you're service connected, if one of the parents is service connected at 0% or greater, or you've adopted a child 18 or under, and you're service connected at 0% or greater, then you're eligible for the college fee waiver plan. And that's the uh, plan through the state of California for, for uh, junior colleges, uh, state and UCs. Uh, none of the privates are covered, but there's a, a lot of coverage there that people really aren't familiar with. And, and it's a tremendous benefit. My oldest went to West Point and I had two kids that did the college fee waiver plan. And let me tell you something, that's, that's a tremendous benefit to get your children into college. Um, but you have to be 0% service connected or greater. And then at 100% service connection, there's other benefits, um, but that's a whole nother story. The, the simple thing is that 0% service connection or greater. So you don't wanna wait if, if you think you're eligible for that benefit, you don't want to wait until the day before you're going on your college visit with your daughter, uh, you know, down to Santa Barbara University to try and get these benefits, right? Typically, you would want to have had your service connection. You, you know, you want to come and talk to us. We, we get, you know, the idea of what's going on with you and, and, and where you are and, and, and sort of where you've been and, and lay down the base claims, right? If you're successful and you get service connected at 0% or greater, then prior to your child going to the college, you sit down with us. It has to be after the tax year. So it's typically, you know, uh, around um, May or June of, of the year prior to enrollment. Um, and we, you come to our office, you get us on the telephone or on a Zoom meeting or however you need to get in contact with us. We have to have your information in our system and we have to verify that, you know, the information that this is your dependent. Yes, you're service connected. For instance, if um, George Johnson is a veteran that I took care of years ago, and let's say he's 30%. And hey, my daughter's graduating college or graduating high school this year. She's got five different colleges she wants to go to. My advice to that veteran is very simple. We can only give one of those waivers a year. So you can't apply to five colleges and then say, hey, I got, I, want, I got into these five colleges. I don't know which one I want to go to. I need these college waivers. Well, that's not how it works. So you need to determine which college you're getting into. You've been accepted. You let us know. We pull your information on the screen. There's a DBS 40 you'll need to fill out and, and you'll have to have some tax information from your child. Um, or, or the paper from uh, the IRS that says that they didn't have any income for the, for the last year. And it's all based on income from the prior year. And it's, it's a little over between twelve dollars and $13,000. They're allowed to have that income. But after that, they're not eligible. And that's a combined income. So that counts the dollars that you as a parent are associated with you know, helping your child out with. So if they live with you and, and you know, you're paying all their insurance and stuff and you say you, you gave them zero dollars, uh, you know, it's that adjusted gross income is going to come into question. And you're going to have to write down what happened. Right. Um, and how that is. Otherwise, it's a very simple process. Your child made seven thousand dollars last year. You provided six thousand dollars. You know, it, it, it's it's a very simple process. We do the paperwork. You have a DBS 40 to fill out, which is the California fee waiver. Um, and the dependent and the veteran both sign that document. We get your tax information for the minor and, and off we go. It, it's a very simple process. And, and just as a side note, a, a very common 0% rating service connection is oftentimes like hearing, right? Um, hearing is, is probably the most common zero. If you have ringing in your ear as a result of your service, that's, that's tinnitus and it's typically rated at 10%. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different things you could be connected for scars, for example, um, all the way up to the more serious issues. Um, 
best way to find out a little bit more about this is again, is give us a call, talk to one of the VSRs and they can run you through sort of what the different options are. Once we have a little conversation with you, find out a little bit more about your service and, and, and what issues you're, you're looking to address. Okay, next question. Um, is, is my county office the place to start for a reevaluation? Absolutely. Absolutely. So a veteran uh, of any age or any era, I mean, from a guy who got hurt in boot camp and, and thinks I'm not a veteran, well, you got hurt in boot camp and, and now you're not able to serve anymore because you have this injury to uh, somebody that's retired. You know, we've done everything from privates to flag officers, you name it, you know, it, it's a very simple conversation to start. What I recommend is you gather your information. If you're already service connected, you can bring your um, service connected documents, you know, saying what you're service connected for, what you've been denied for. Um, and we sit down and we make up a plan. It all starts with a simple conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have, I have one last question. There, are, there were several that came in. Many of them are, are very specific and individual. Um, I know you guys are really looking for that help and, and assistance. I would strongly, strongly encourage you to reach out to Ed or Richard or to your local county offices again. Um, they, they really wanna give the most generic information and not share anything that's, that's personal. So please, please, for those of you have, who have sent me um, some very specific questions that re would relate specifically to you, please make sure you are contacting Ed or Richard. So our last question is about transitioning. And so this person was wondering what are some common um, mistakes that people make before transitioning out and what would you recommend for those who are getting ready to transition out of the military? One of the big things is not having your medical records, you know, um, and, and not having gone over your records prior to getting out. Because part of your out processing is reviewing your medical records, getting your physical, you know, doing all that stuff. When in, in real world, you know, most of us are coming from someplace, you know, um, and, and you have a few days to get out of service or, or in some cases, you know, you're turning your weapons, your ammo and your, your gear and you're, and you're done. You know, those things are very hard to uh, gather information on. Um, and once you're out, it's very hard to get back into that information. A lot of times the reservists and the National Guard's medical records are atrocious because, you know, there's, there's not a national system where they all go typically. Um, this reserve unit has records. That reserve unit has records. They didn't merge the two. Um, really having that information is, is pretty critical and, and getting, getting treatment within the first year of your discharge is, is wholly crucial. You have to have, one of the parts of the law that we argue is, okay, you never had any problems with your knees while you were in service, but guess what? Three months after you got back, now all of a sudden you're, you're you know, you're, you're having to go to physical therapy, you're having to do this, you're having to do that, um, and it's killing you, and, you know, um, or you go for a job interview and they say, hey, you know, 90 days out of service and you get a, a, a really good physical exam, say you're going to work for a major corporation, they give you a physical exam and they say, hey, you have a heart murmur or, you know, you've got, uh, you know, bad back or, you know, you're, you've got a torn labrum, you know, um, wh whatever the case is, uh, from hernias to, you know, bad bones to you name it. The idea is how do we Put the information together that the VA looks at it and says, you got out, we say everything was fine, and three months later you have a bad, now you have arthritis in your knee. Well, guess what? You didn't have arthritis. You must have had arthritis while you were in service, okay? Um, the question is how it started, and that's all a matter of how we develop that evidence, okay? So um, it, it really does, again, starts with a phone call. Um, but the biggest part of pre transitioning is to, when you go through your CalTAP, you're, you're doing your, your exits, you need to have yourself review your medical records, make sure everything's in there. Uh, you're going to forget, you know, time is flying, you're getting out, so much stuff's on your mind. 
you know, six months later, you say, oh man, wait a minute, you know, they never fixed my shoulder because then we deployed again, you know, and now you're back swinging a hammer or, or doing something in construction or whatever. And, and all of a sudden your shoulder's hurting again and you're going, man, I remember that we were, you know, at NTC when I fell off that tank or whatever the situation is. So sitting down with a professional, figuring out where you need to be, uh, figuring out what evidence we need to gather and how we need to proceed is everybody's case is so individual. You know, we could, we could really do this for hours and hours um, as far as who needs what. So again, the best opportunity is, is to get a hold of someone in our office you know, when you call, um, when you call our office, 802-6598, Matt is typically the guy that answers phone. Matt, Matt's a combat Marine. He's no joke. He's, he is, he is as smart as they come. He's probably one of the best guys in, in, in the County. And he's probably one of the best guys in the state. He's an awesome guy. He will not let you down. He's going to send you to one of us. You're going to get a hold of us. You know, he's going to give you some information at the beginning as far as what you need to do. He's going to decide, okay, you're going to go over here. You're going to go over there. This is the person I'm going to put you on their calendar. He's probably going to give you some information that you need to gather. When we get on the phone or, or on a Zoom or, or, you know, Teams meetings, there's there's so many things now. Don't, don't, don't hesitate to get a hold of us. We gather the information. We'll sit down and come up with your plan because everybody's plan is really different. I, I just, I want to add one more thing before we close. Um, it, it touching a little bit on, on, on what Rich said. And, and for those of you that are, that are, that are going to be getting out, absolutely take the time to, to make sure that you document and talk to the especially during your, your, your exit exam, any issue, the, the, the more we're able to document it as a part of your, your, medic, uh, your service treatment record, the easier it is for us to make that connection. But the other thing I want to stress is for those of you that, that, that are out and look back and say, hey, you know what? I didn't say anything about it. And there's a lot. There's a lot of veterans that, that deal with that and for multiple reasons. Um, don't let that be a reason that you don't reach out for assistance, okay? Um, the reality is that it, it, the, it's the culture in, in the military to not complain. It's the culture in the military to not reach out and ask for help. It's the culture in the military to, you know, keep your mouth shut and do your job, um, suffering sometimes in silence. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not going to be eligible for benefits. It doesn't mean that you don't have rights to access these benefits. Um, there's a lot of folks that we work with um, who you know, live with shame because of, of experiences they had um, and don't want to talk about it. We've worked with so many veterans across such a broad spectrum of issues um, that odds are that we've worked with a veteran who's got your same issue. But I, I would I would want to stress that, you know, and sitting there and and denying yourself access to the benefits, the treatment, the counseling, whatever it is that you're entitled to because you are ashamed or because you feel like you're not entitled to it or because maybe you think, hey, you know, um, no one will believe me. You know, I can't stress how much damage that does to you. It, it, I would really ask you to reach out to us, um, understand that we will work with you in all confidentiality, but also understand that we work with so many different cases across the spectrum um, with so many different veterans, um, our, our office cares tremendously about making sure that those of you who served and your family members are taken care of, you know, it, it's just a partial thanks for your willingness to serve this country. So please reach out to us, talk to us. We're here to help you. All right, I'm pretty sure, um, Danielle, you said that was um, the last uh, more broad question, correct? I believe so, I'm looking at the um, yeah. questions now. Perfect, yeah. so, um, and kind of like we said earlier, um, if you have more specific questions, um, if you um, don't remember anything at all that Etta Richard said, please remember to contact them. 
Um, again, their contact information is going to be on the last slide as well, just in case you need it again later. Um, but for right now, we're going to move on. And thank you so much, Ed, for all the amazing information you gave and uh, Richard for answering all those questions and Ed for jumping in on them too. Um, you guys are so wealth of information and um, such a great resource. So thank you so much for sharing your morning with us. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to... Um, our next speaker, um, which is really a treat, Kathleen is here um, from the Student Veteran Health Program in San Francisco, and she is going to give you um, just a ton of really great information. So Kathleen, whenever you are ready. Hey, thank you so much for having us, and thank you to everyone who's joined us today. Um, so I've cut down some of the slides and um, as I go through it, I'll kind of explain why I've made some decisions I have, um, but at the end, I'll have my phone number and um, up, and I definitely welcome people to contact me directly if you end up having any questions for me. Um, could you go to the next slide? And then click again. So um, as we had mentioned earlier, the VA um, on the federal level has three different administrations. So we have the health administration, Next, um, the Benefits Administration, and then the Cemetery Administration. So the way I kind of think about these is that the VA Health Administration, which is actually the branch I'm in, offers direct health services. So anything that's actually directly happening, like a service to you, is often going to be through the Health Administration. That could be medical appointments, it could be social work services, it could be mental health. Um, so anything that's directly reaching you is typically going to be the health benefits. Um, Veterans Benefits Administration or VBA, most of you who are in school have had contact with the VBA through your GI Bill. Um, Voc Rehab or it's actually called Veteran Readiness goes through that. So the Veterans Benefits Administration, I think of it as if the VA is giving you money for something, that's often through the benefits. Now, obviously all of these are the VA, but they kind of, they're different branches and kind of handle different things. So I like to just keep, like give people an overview of that. Um, sometimes people go through the VBA and get their GI bill, get service connected and actually never have contact with the health administration and vice versa. But often you can access both of them and today I'm gonna to focus on the health administration, but I think um, Rich and Ed, who um, did an awesome job of actually going over a lot of the benefits administration and what you would be actually working directly with them to access those benefits. And on a side note, the um, County Veterans Service Office like Ed or County Veterans Service Offices in other counties, that's the probably the referral I make the most. I direct a ton of people to the County Veterans Service Office and because you can access so many benefits, but it's a really confusing process. So I do really encourage anyone who has questions about benefits to reach out to them because it's um, there are other veteran service organizations that you can go through, but the county is, there's no hidden fees. They're mostly staffed by a lot of veterans and we've had just really great experience with them. So I, again, wanna just put a plug for that. Um, the last administration through, or the last branch of the VA administration is the cemeteries. Um, so uh, Arlington, Golden Gate National Cemetery, um, these are all uh, cemeteries that veterans have access to um, for burial. And again, uh, Rich and those folks would be able to help access that benefit. Next slide. So the, the VA healthcare, um, there's a lot of misperceptions about the VA. Um, I hear a lot about, um, well, I heard so-and-so had terrible service at the VA. And so I'm just going to put it out there. The VA is not a perfect system, but there is no perfect health system. Um, there are times where it can be hard to navigate, but that's kind of every health system. So I want to just um, kind of say that it's at some point something's going to get confusing and that's really if you're accessing that care I want you to reach out to, to me or reach out to one of my colleagues who can help you um, because it's a big system I think that sometimes it can be a little scary to enter it even um, enrolling and it can be confusing so we're happy to help and again I'll put my information out there so you guys can reach out to me. 
Um, but the VA does have some comprehensive benefits. Um, we do preventative care. We do primary care. Um, we're covering COVID care at this point. You can access mental health, specialty care. And I sh should say this, none of this has to be related to service. So if you're eligible for the VA health care system, you're going to be able to access care over a broad range of um, conditions, and they don't have to be related to service. So we have lots of people who, you know, maybe they end up ca um, getting cancer. They can get care through the VA. Um, doesn't have to have anything to do with their service. Um, you'll also find that there are some VAs that have emergency hospitalizations available, like our, our, our EDs. Um, you can get prescriptions. Uh, the VA has social work services who can help with a, um, a, a wider range of services, like homeless services. If you have, I know a veteran or you yourself have had legal issues, there's a veterans justice um, outreach program. So there's a lot of things at the VA that we can offer to help support veterans. Um, there is also a, a veterans, um, a VA dental insurance program that you have to pay a little out of pocket, but that is available as well as um, access to community benefits. So in, in the case that your doctor thinks that you need something, um, some one service that comes up quite a bit is acupuncture. So if your doctor agrees that acupuncture, for instance, might be helpful to you, um, they can put a referral in for acupuncture. The VA will send out a community care referral. Once that gets approved, the VA will send you out into the community for acupuncture um, and they'll pay for it. So there's really, again, a lot of benefits under the VA healthcare system. Um, next slide. And so um, just to, because we are in a time of COVID, I do wanna say the VA does offer testing and it's within CDC guidelines. So if you were to go to the VA and say, I, I just wanna get tested for COVID, you know, you, you probably want actually a reason for that. So um, they'll ask, have you had contact with somebody who uh, you think has had co or has COVID or, um, uh, you know, any exposure, you know somebody. So you just want to kind of keep that in mind if you're going and requesting testing. Um, once vaccines are available, uh, we will be providing that free of charge to all veterans. And right now the rollout has been through 65-year-old um, veterans and older. So at some point, especially with um, supplies going up, we'll be able to expand who's getting the vaccine. And then um, we also have a VA Kind of a, we put together a COVID resource sheet and we'll be including that in the description box or the chat box um, for you guys. And that's different resources in the community as we all deal with COVID. Um, next slide. So how do I fit in all of this? Um, so San Francisco VA has something called the Veteran Student Health Program. And that is a team of us who pre-COVID, we're actually on campus. Um, and while we're in, um, in the COVID situation, everyone's at home, we're still providing services. And so it's really direct care to veterans who are in a school setting. Um, somebody asked earlier about the transition from military to civilian life. And um, that's one of the biggest challenges that we found is the transition from being in a, this kind of unit, being in the military, having lots of structure to joining the civilian life. And it's much more chaotic. You're doing lots on your own. And in school, it's actually really challenging because you might find a lot of the students or other students or your classmates are younger. They haven't had the life experience that you've had. Um, you're not, you don't have your unit anymore. There's no unit goal. So that transition can be really tough. And so we're on campus, not only to just try to help support that transition, but also to link you up with care. And that could be helping enroll in VA healthcare. Um, that could be making sure you link up with the County Veterans Service Office, helping you navigate the school situation. Um, so while we're on campus and even even now, like while we're not on campus, but we provide some um, speaker series like we're having today to provide information to veterans. Um, more often than not, I hear people say, well, I heard of VA healthcare, but it was like 20 minutes in this long taps that I did, and I don't remember anything. So um, we can help with enrolling in VA healthcare, determine whether you're eligible or not. 
Um, if you are eligible, we'll get you enrolled. We can help, help schedule appointments and help you just really navigate that system. Um, we can help refer you to campus and community resources, um, try to coordinate, like, like with Gina today, coordinate these speaker series. Um, and then personally, I actually um, help with providing mental health services to student um, veterans directly. So I have a, a caseload of student veterans that I work with um, to help with other mental health issues like anxiety um, and other things that might be coming up for them. And that's very, very common. And so um, I actually don't really know that I've met any veteran who hasn't had some bumps in the road as they transition out of the military. So we're here to help with that. Next slide, please. So the VA healthcare system, it's pretty, it's, it's a national program. So in this area, we have um, healthcare uh, through San Francisco, uh, Northern Cal, which is the East Bay, north up toward Sacramento, and then Palo Alto, which is kind of San Bruno, like just south of San Bruno, and it, it goes all the way down to Monterey. Um, so you can kind of click through these. Um, I was, I didn't put, so we have a slide that talks about basic eligibility for healthcare, and I did not include that. And one of the reasons I didn't include it is because I don't want anyone to read something off that slide and say, well, I'm not eligible then. Because there's, because individual, like eligibility is very individual to every veteran, I definitely prefer people to call and talk to me about their specific situation. Um, and I'll throw an example out. So um, one of the, uh, for active duty, one of the eligibility criteria for healthcare is 24 um, consecutive months of active duty and that you've completed the, that, that um, 24 months and that you had better than a dishonorable discharge. Well, I've come across veterans who were out in um, a year because they had an injury. So initially, they were not eligible for VA health care. We linked them up with the County Veterans Service Office. They got service connected. And once they got service connected, they were eligible for health care. So that's, um, you know, kind of a way in which on paper, they would not look eligible. But in practical terms, they ended up being eligible because of circumstances. Um, the reason, one of the reasons we actually work toward um, with student veterans to get them um, enrolled in healthcare now is that there is a income eligibility threshold. So sometimes when veterans get out, um, they're in school, their income, I don't know about you guys, but as a student, I was very, very poor. <laughs> so most students don't have much of an income. So um, this is a great time to enroll in the healthcare system because the income threshold tends to be less of an issue. And even if you decide that you don't want to use the VA, just enroll because at least once you're enrolled, you'll have that healthcare for your whole life. Um, what I hate to see happen is that when people get out, they don't enroll in healthcare. And then there's a situation where they really need healthcare and they have to jump through a lot of barriers to get healthcare because say their income was too much. Um, they lost a job. I mean, there's lots of things that make it harder to access it later. So we like to try to at least get people in the system, get them linked up with care. If they choose not to use care, that's fine. But I, 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 I do like to make sure that people have it just because, you know, healthcare is something, especially now um, during a pandemic, healthcare crises can happen at any point. And I'd much rather get people enrolled and they have access to care than have to scramble and try to figure out getting care later on. Um, next slide. Oh, sorry. Actually, this will bounce through. Thank you. So why should I enroll? So there, again, there's no enrollment fees. There's no annual deductibles. There's no monthly premiums. And that's a huge benefit. Um, you, if your parents aren't veterans, um, you can ask them how much they spend on insurance, health insurance per month, and often it's in the hundreds. So the VA healthcare system, if you're in the system, you are not paying any monthly premiums, no annual premiums. Um, you might have co-payments for medications or doctor visits, but that really is dependent on your income the previous year. So you might have co-payments one year and not the following year. Um, that, and I should also say, 
for eligibility, if any of you have ever applied for the VA and said, and were told you were denied because of income, if you have an income change, you can reapply. So again, there's all these little caveats of how eligibility that um, is one of the reasons why I stress just reaching out and having us help you through that, that um, navigating that part. Um, there is, it is a nationwide system, as I mentioned, with over 1,700 sites of, in, of care um, currently, and actually probably from now on, we will be providing a lot of telehealth. So um, it's really nice that veterans can actually, especially when you're in school, you can actually see a doctor um, via video. If you can't make it to the clinic, um, you can schedule something um, online with them, and uh, you can get all your a lot of your healthcare done via video. Um, and you don't have to give up other insurances. So if you are on your parents' insurance or have your own insurance, or you have Tricare, and you're eligible for the VA healthcare system, you can have both. You do not have to give up the other healthcare systems. And actually, a lot of times people use both. So we have some veterans who have Kaiser, for instance, um, and they use the VA healthcare because it helps um, the VA charges less for medications, for instance. So you can actually end up finding that both systems can work together. And that's a really nice uh, perk of that benefit. Um, can you click it one more time? Thank you. Um, in normal times, we have a VA healthcare ID card, which is a government issued ID um, that we can help give you. And once we're back on campus, I'm happy to work with anybody to help get that. Um, the VA dental insurance program, um, the Dental is one of those programs at the VA. It is actually one of one of the only VA programs that doesn't isn't covered by it doesn't cover all veterans, and in part that's because the VA doesn't have the capacity to do two cleanings for every veteran every year. So, um, in replacement of that, they set up a veterans um, dental insurance program where the v the veteran will pay. Um, a lower cost premium, the VA pays part of the premium. And so there's a little bit um, more of a cost um, or a savings benefit. So if anyone wants any information about that program, I'm happy to send that out to you. Um, also, again, there are there is some access to community and urgent care. Um, I am speaking of, you know, why, again, I should enroll. You know, I know a lot of veterans um, might be a bit younger and don't necessarily feel like they're you know, that they need to see a doctor. And, you know, I, I usually just tell people get, get seen once a year. If you get into the VA seen once a year, because if something does come up it, and it's good to have a doctor that knows you or that you have a chart ready. Um, often I'll find veterans who are in a, in a little bit of a medical crisis, and then they're trying to establish care at the VA. And it's, just like any other insurance, it's just kind of hard to do that. So even if you don't feel like you need have any big issues going on medically, just get your annual physical it's at the very basics. Um, but you can also get immunizations and other things at the VA. So it's, you know, it's good to know that that's there, but it's also good to just establish it and kind of piggybacking on what the um, County Veteran Service Office and um, Ed said was, you know, if you are doing a service connection um, claim or filing a claim, starting to get care for those conditions that you're filing a claim for is really helpful to your claim. So yeah, if you have a shoulder injury, go to the VA, talk, talk to your doctor about it and start getting care for your shoulder. Your shoulder. Um, when the VA looks at that and looks at your claim, they're gonna also see that you're getting care for it. And that really helps make an argument that your condition is bothering you enough that you know it really might be a service connected at a higher percentage because of that. So next slide. So a few myths that I just wanted to bring up that I hear a lot about. Um, so the VA, the myth is the VA healthcare system is available to uh, only available to veterans who have a service related injury, and that's absolutely not true. If you are eligible for VA healthcare, and we have lots of veterans who have no service connection disability and get seen at the VA. So there, is, um, there isn't any criteria that says you, that the VA only sees um, service-related conditions or veterans who have injuries in service. Um, veterans are only eligible for uh, VA um, healthcare for five years. This is kind of, this myth has, I think, been made worse by the VA. <laughs> 
so there is something called the um, combat veteran status. And that's for veterans who were served in a combat um, situation. They have five years of free health care through the VA. Um, if they're in the VA system, you will stay in forever. But the five years is that it's free. Um, anything related to combat will be free. And that's really the idea is to help you during those five years, make sure you get service connected. So that way, care from the VA at that that point on won't get you won't get charged for anything, you know. If you're in a combat situation, you have a, a you know a back injury. We don't want the VA to then charge you copayments for your back. So we offer this five years. Hopefully, you'll get service connected in that time. So your care just you don't ever get charged for that. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, please like reach out to me and I can explain that further. Um, and another myth, and I think um, Ed had mentioned this a little bit, um, if I use VA health care, I will be taking services away from veterans who need the care more than me. Um, there's lots of care available at the VA. Um, it's, a, it's a benefit that all veterans have earned. And so by actually using the VA, you're you're helping maintain and sometimes even expand the budget of the VA. So by getting care at the VA, you're saying, hey, this is important for veterans. And so the, the one caveat I will say of, of this is the way that you might take services away from another veteran is if you make a, an appointment at the VA and then just don't show up. So I would say just, you know, if you go to the VA, you can't make an appointment because a class assignment or something came up just call and cancel it because that cancellation opens up a slot for another veteran to get in. And so it's really, again, there's no, some veteran deserves it more than me. Another veteran needs it more. I don't deserve it. That comes up a lot. And I just want to say, you know, it is an earned benefit and we want you to, you know, the VA healthcare um, is a way to improve your quality of life. If you have aches and pains that are bothering you, come get care. If you are finding that you're a bit more anxious, you have some PTSD symptoms happening, we, we want to help with that. So, um, you know, again, it can be a daunting system. So I just want to put it out there that I'm happy to help people navigate through that. Um, next slide. Yeah. So thanks for listening to all of this. Um, so this is my contact information. This cell phone is my work cell. Um, I want to throw it out there that if you want me to contact you, feel free to send me a text on that number. If I get a text from you, I'm happy to I'll respond and we can set up a time to um, to meet um, with the application. I can set up a Zoom. We can do the application right online together um, and you'll kind of know what's happening from beginning to end. And if you end up getting enrolled, I will help you make an appointment if you want. So I'll put that out there for you guys. So thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much, Kathleen. And you guys, Kathleen, um, she said something really, really amazing just a minute ago. She said she wants to have a way to improve your quality of life. I mean, that is so important. So that was so much great information, Kathleen. I hope um, if you are not already signed up for this, you go out there and you do some research on it. You call her and ask questions and you get signed up. It seems like um, it's no brainer. So anyways, thank you so much, Kathleen. Yeah. Um, so um, next up, we'll go ahead and answer some questions um, a little after this, unless we're there. Danielle, were there any questions? I just had one. There was one asking just some clarification on the vet centers that are within the community about whether or not they are a part of the Veterans Health Administration. That's a great question. So the vet center is a part of the VA administration or health administration. The um, the thing is that the vet center, um, their coverage or who's who's eligible for it is a little bit different. Um, but what's nice about the vet centers is that it, it provides mental health services. They do not offer any medication management. So if you have a condition that requires a little bit of medication, so um, significant depression, for instance, um, uh, any other condition that might need some medications, you'll want to go through the VA healthcare. But the vet centers are nice because they offer mental health services and the records are self-contained at the vet center. So if you're getting mental health through the vet center, 
Like, for instance, I would not have access to those records. Um, and that kind of gives a little bit more confidentiality and privacy. Um, however, not all veterans are eligible for it. So I'm happy to look and, and talk individually with you if you're interested and help you access some of the vet centers. But it's a great resource. And it's something that came up around Vietnam era. So there's a lot of veterans who are not really super comfortable going to the VA healthcare, but they needed some mental health support. So those vet centers um, came up and offered a really nice, um, a lot of privacy and they offer great groups and um, a lot of the staff there are veterans. So it's a really nice option to know about. And again, I'm happy to um, direct you to your local vet center. Okay, that was the only one that I had. Oh wait, huh? I just got one that just came in just now. Um, does I think you kind of touched on this? Does the vet centers share the same electronic health records? Yeah, no, they don't. Um, so I believe that the vet centers might have some access to our records, but they we don't have rec um, access to their records. And again, they don't offer any healthcare stuff. Um, healthcare services. Um, so it's a nice pairing. So if you wanted to get me uh, medical care at the um, VA health office, you can. Um, mental health, you can get through the vet centers. Um, but yeah, they, we don't really share. We don't, we do not have access to their records at all. Um, I, one more caveat I should say is we are also not connected to the military. So I have had a number of veterans who are worried about talking to the VA because they're worried that information that they give about their experience in the military is going to get back to their units or their, um, or to their, uh, you know, their, their leadership. And that's not how that works either. We are not connected to the military. So um, even if you aren't eligible for the vet centers, but have some things that you want to talk about, you can come to the VA. We do not share those records with the military or anybody without your permission. Wow, that's, um, I'm so glad that question was asked. And Kathleen, thank you so much for saying that out loud um, because I think that is probably something that, I mean, that's a really relevant fear out there that information could get out. So thank you, regardless of your situation. I mean, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm sure everybody wants to know that. So, um, so you guys, if there are any other questions that you have for Kathleen, or for um, the two um, CVSOs, still um, ask them in the chat because um, we will go over them. We're going to have a, um, a, an even bigger question answer section after just in case anyone has any questions at the end. So um, please don't hesitate to ask any questions that you might have. Um, so at this time, um, we'll go ahead and move on. And right now, oh, here we go. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little bit of overview about what CalTAP is. So again, like I said earlier, uh, my name is Jana. I'm one of the CalTAP training coordinators um, at CalVet. So um, I wanna tell you a little bit about what CalTAP does, um, what our goal is, and then give you guys um, just some um, basic knowledge on some of the benefits that we offer. So um, the goal of CalTAP is to inform and connect veterans of all eras to their earned benefits. And I read that verbatim because I want to make sure um, that's exactly what it is. It's veterans of all eras. We help everybody from start to finish um, at whatever point in your life um, that you may need assistance. And we continue to give you that support and assistance. So we do that through um, giving information through five different pathways. Um, core curriculum, education, employment, entrepreneurship, and service providers. We're going to go ahead and go over some of these pathways a little bit later, but this is how we give out information. Okay, so this is the Veterans Resource Book. Um, you guys probably received a PDF copy yesterday. This is what it looks like. Something important to remember that either on the last page of the PDF copy or on the back, you can kind of see it here, there's an 800 number right here. And you can use that phone number to call us with any question or if you need assistance with anything at any time. Um, if we don't have the answer, we will either transfer you to someone that does or we will figure out the answer and get it to you. So how do you use CalTAP online? So you can just Google CalVet. We're usually the first um, one that'll come up in the search. Click on the CalVet website. This is the website you'll see. Um, under the laptop, you see CalTAP. You can click right on that. And once you do click on CalTAP, you're going to come up to our page. And this is um, where you're going to find a lot of the information that we house. So we have those five different pathways that I mentioned a few minutes ago. 
And then also, if you look at the very bottom of the screen, you're going to see in yellow, um, the word archives is circled. So a lot of these webinars that we're holding and that we've held in the last year, um, since we've been doing uh, mostly everything online, um, we go ahead and we, uh, we're we recording these webinars. Today's being recorded. And we go ahead and we post them on our website. So that way you can refer back to this webinar to get information, maybe to get someone's contact information. Or if you have friends that want this information, um, they can go ahead and watch it too. So you just click on that archives button and you're going to see a list of previously recorded webinars. And actually, we need to update this slide, but um, you'll see it housed in either um, 2021 or back to all the webinars from last year in 2020. And um, if you go back to our main page, um, right under this um, archive section here, it's going to show a list of any webinars that we have coming up in the future as well. Okay, so um, once you, um, if you want to go ahead and get more information, you can click on one of the pathways. We're going to click on core curriculum. And this is the setup that you'll see. Lots of different modules full of lots of different information. Um, you can just go ahead and you can click on the one of the modules. We're going to go ahead and click on California benefits. And we're going to go ahead and quickly go over what are some of your California benefits. And if you have any further information or want more questions on any of these details, please don't hesitate to either call that 1-800 number. You can email us. All of our um, contact info will be um, right at the end of this webinar. Um, so this is also when you go online, you can find um, um, all the information on any of these topics or any of these benefits for you. It's going to give you, if you need to fill out an application for it, it's going to give you the application, it's going to tell you all the requirements, everything like that. And then also a lot of this information is in that resource book as well. Okay, so one of the biggest benefits, um, I just mentioned it, um, it's located in the resource book. It's actual regional outreach. We have eight local interagency network coordinators in California. They're all split up with um, in eight different regions in California, and they're there to give you guys information and more details on what is available in your specific region. Um, you should have gotten a link map um, in the email last night as well. Um, it's also going to be posted here in the chat. That way you have um, the contact information for our links. Okay, so what are our California specific benefits? I'm just going to go over and go over some basic information on um, each of these bullet points. And again, if you have more um, questions about them, you can reach out to us either via email or that 800 number or ask during um, the question and answer section. So first, the California tuition fee waiver, or the college tuition fee waiver. Um, this is one of our um, uh, benefits that we get the most questions about. It is, I mean, one of the greatest benefits we offer. Um, just to give you a little, um, little detail on it, basically, this is going to waive all fees and tuition for all public schools in California. This is going to include your California community colleges, your state schools, and your UCs. This is going to go from your general education all the way through your doctorate. Um, it saves, obviously, veterans so much money every single year. An incredible benefit. Please let us know if you have more questions. Okay, so there are programs through the DMV that veterans can um, access. Um, you can actually get the word veteran um, printed on your driver's license. This is great because um, anything that you would need your 214 for, you don't have to carry that around with you. You can have it simply listed right on your license. There is also the um, motor vehicle registration fee waiver. Um, and you can find all eligibility requirements for this either online or in the resource book, um, but you can get that fee waiver. Now, if you are into outdoor activities, um, you can you may be eligible to receive your fishing and hunting license at a reduced annual fee. And depending on your disability rating, you could be eligible for a state parks pass without any fees at all. So that's a really great um, that's a really great benefit. If you have any questions on that, you can find information in the resource book or online, of course. Um, there's also a few beneficial tax programs that CalVet offers. The first is the property tax exemption for the home of a disabled veteran or an, unmar an unmarried spouse of a deceased dis disabled veteran. And then there's also the business license tax and fee exemption for an honorably discharged veterans as well. All information on, um, on these tax programs can be found either online or in the resource book. 
Um, next up, we have the CalVet Home Loans Program. This is something that is different from the VA Home Loan. However, you can use them together. We offer an amazing home loan program if you are at all interested in buying a home in the future, if you've already started the process. Um, I um, urge, I, I mean, I, I absolutely um, uh, think you should go and look up this information, go online. You can also call us and we can give you information on it. Um, that way you can see if you can qualify for the home loan program. Okay, next up, um, CalVet has a women veterans program and they are going to offer information, advocacy and outreach and support to women veterans and also their families. Um, they partner with the Women Veterans Leadership Council, which is a council um, of women spread all over California. They share information from county to county. Um, you can sign up for a roster for this. Um, you just sign up with your email. It's right on our website. I'm going to show you where to go for that in just a moment. But that way you can get emails on a regular basis to know what's going on um, county to county um, or all over California. Um, there's also a minority veterans program, and they also provide information, advocacy, and outreach to California's minority veterans and also their families as well. Um, this program is going to help to is going to help with unnaturalized veterans, and also it's going to help with your um, citizenship processes as well or services as well. Um, you can also sign up for a roster on this. You just go to um, our website and you can sign up with your email so you can get information about either what's going on in your county or also statewide. Oh, I skipped ahead there. Um, so California um, has, um, they've got eight homes in California um, that we have for long-term care. They're located all over the state. So they are in Chula Vista, Fresno, Lancaster, Barstow, Redding, Ventura. Um, they're in West LA and then also in Yauntville. Um, there's six levels of care. Um, it's going to range from anywhere from independent living, memory care, assisted living, and then also skilled nursing care. If you'd like more information on that, it's probably not something you may be looking into right now, but something for the future. Um, you can go either to our website. There's information in our resource book as well. And then also something you might not be thinking about um, are our state cemeteries. Now you probably know that there are nine national cemeteries in California, but there's also three state cemeteries. They are located um, on the coast in Seaside. They are um, up in Northern California in Redding and then in Yauntville as well. So all the requirements and eligibility are located online or in the resource book. Um, if you have any questions, you can always call us as well. Um, so, um, lastly, um, I can show you where to find a lot of this information. Um, when you go to the CalVet website, so just Google CalVet, at the top there, you see the CalVet programs. You can hover over that, and then you can click in any of these tabs for home loans, the minority veteran, veteran homes division, um, veteran service, or women veterans. You can click on any of those tabs, and it's going to give you all the information to either sign up on the rosters, um, just more information about um, the different benefits that each of these divisions offer, um, things like that. So um, now I want to tell you a little bit about our local interagency network coordinators, or we like to call them our links. Um, and um, like I said, there are eight of them in California. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, these are um, the eight links are an amazing resource to any veteran or their families in California. Um, this is kind of how their, um, their regions are all split up. As you can see, they have email addresses here. If you have any specific questions, you can email them directly. Um, Kevin is going to be the link um, that is um, designated for the Bay Area. He wasn't able to be here today, but we will have his contact information on the last slide as well, in case you'd like to contact him directly. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what the links do. So um, they do provide outreach to not only servicemen, not only service members, but to veterans and their families. So they are there for you guys. Anything that you can think of, if if you need to go out and you need to find a, um, you know, a washer dryer, and you need help with that, you can call them for that. If you need to figure out about healthcare, you can find out about that. Maybe you don't know where to start with filing a claim, you can reach out to them for that. Um, if they are not able to help you specifically, they are going to know the resource or the person or the contact to send you to, or they will have them contact you directly. So they are an amazing resource. Um, they make referrals and work directly with established service providers and networks, kind of what I was just saying. 
um, anything that really that you are looking for, whatever need you have, they're going to be able to figure out a solution for you of how you can, how they can get you to that goal or that need. Um, they're going to assist with local emergencies. Um, they are all over the state um, helping us out with everything we need. Um, when they were fired, when, you know, all, well, not when there were fires, there are unfortunately always fires, but they're always out there helping our veterans, helping um, with the needs of the community um, when these local emergencies are happening. Um, they also provide leadership and advocacy to local communities. So um, not only are they, are they making these connections with these local service providers, but then these service providers are reaching out to them too um, for their leadership as well. So um, the links are, um, are really great. They're a great resource if you need, um, when you need help with really anything. So they're gonna be able to connect you to benefits. So um, they work with um, a lot of different agencies. So employment and training, they work with the Employment Development Department, EDD. You guys, they have contacts at EDD. So if you need help with stuff, you need help reaching out to them. Um, when I say reaching out to them, I mean to EDD, reach out to the links because they'll be able to help you. Um, also the America's Job Center of California, they have contacts there as well. Um, you know, I'm just gonna plug in my laptop really quick. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so um, they also, with California State Benefits, um, they work with the County Veteran Service Offices directly. So uh, the two gentlemen that you just heard earlier, Ed and Richard, they work with them. Kevin works with them. So they can, um, they can bounce off of each other. They can help each other out. Um, they also, um, the links are technically CalVet employees. So they, of course, work with us and know all of our state benefits and can help you out with that. And then with healthcare as well, the VA medical centers and clinics and the vet centers, yes, they have lots of contacts there. If you need more details on that, um, please reach out to us or reach out to them directly. Um, so like I said, Kevin is the Bay Area Local Interagency Network Coordinator or Bay Area Link. That is his direct contact cell phone. Also his email that you can reach him at if you have questions please reach out to them. Um, in the next slide, his information will be on there as well. So in case you don't catch it, you'll be able to get it in just a moment. Um, and then um, again, this is my information too. This is the basic 1-800 number. It's located on the back of the resource book or the last page of the PDF. You can contact us with any questions um, or if you need assistance with anything at any time, we are here for you. So um, I am gonna go back to the now the question and answer section again and if there are any questions, uh, Danielle, you could let us know. Awesome, thank you. I wanna start by uh, sending a, a heartfelt apologies to everyone who had issues joining this morning. That was totally a mistake on our part. We did not get the correct reminder email sent out to you guys with the Zoom link in there. So for those of you who were joining late, that is completely our fault. I, again, we are so sorry for that. Um, this webinar, as Jenna mentioned, has been recorded. So if there's anything that you missed earlier, um, when you weren't able to join on, you'll be able to get access to this recorded webinar as well as the copy of the presentation on our webinar website. Again, so, so sorry. Um, completely, totally our mistake. Um, so we do have a few questions. Um, I'm going to try to break them up a little bit on based on who they're addressed at. So I want to start with Ed and Richard. Um, there was one question about the getting veterans on your driver's license. And they're just wondering why that process can't be completed without a DG-14, even though the military considers you a veteran after six months of service. That's the way the, uh, the legislation is written. It requires us to verify the DD-214. Um, if you don't have a DD-214 or if you have um, a different type of discharge paper, I mean, we'll work with you to either get a copy of the DD-214, um, if that's what you're missing, um, or if we can get the appropriate uh, discharge paperwork for, for example, if you're a reservist. Um, but ultimately, I mean, we have to follow what the legislation says. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking on that. And then these next few questions are for Kathleen. They're related to, some of them are related to the vet centers. Where are they located? What are they? Some veterans weren't familiar with them. What are the vet centers and where are they located? Yeah, so the vet centers, um, there's not quite as many um, vet centers as there are VA clinics. Um, if you go onto va.gov and you'll look at locations, um, you can find, you can go under vet center. And so a vet center is basically a 
um, again, a branch or like part of the VA healthcare system, and they provide mental health services to um, veterans um, that meet some criteria. So combat veterans um, for dependents or spouses who might have lost a veteran in service. And so there's kind of specific criteria for um, being eligible for the vet center. Um, if you go onto the 8.gov, it can kind of give you a little bit of information about that. But again, I'm happy to help anybody find their direct vet centers. Um, the closest one to us is in the it's Peninsula Vet Center, which is down in um, Menlo Park. And then there's a San Francisco Vet Center. Um, and you can always call them directly and they can go over the eligibility. But um, if you just look up, like, for instance, San Francisco Vet Center, um, their information should come up. And again, kind of... Um, slightly smaller criteria, like it's more um, exclusive uh, to a group of veterans, but it's always worth um, checking out if you are eligible for that. Thank you, Kathleen. So the next question is, so the, so the VBA cannot access vet center notes for comp and pen exams for mental health. And just kind of a follow-up to that, how do you then use mental health notes from the vet center for VA claims if the notes from the vet center cannot be accessed by the VHA? So with anything, I mean, you're going to want to sign a release of information. So I would imagine that Ed and Rich, they go through um, the like accessing um, medical records or mental health records. So um, you would uh, you would work with them, but even if you're not being seen at a VA specifically, you might have a community doctor that you see. You would still need to sign a release of information. So, and they can still access those records. They just need your permission. Um, that's kind of the kind of caveat there. So, with anything, you'll just sign a release of information, and they can have access to those records. It's just that like freely, I can't go into the vet center records and look at those records. So it's really kind of, it keeps them secure. Um, you have access to them if you request them and then you can provide access to them by signing a release of information. Hopefully that clears that up. Right, I, let me add one more thing. Um, and I, I, don't, I hope not to confuse the, the, the conversation by adding this, but it, again, you when, you when you're filing a claim with the VA, you can, file a claim and then ask the VA to develop that claim for you. And the VA will work with you. They'll ask you for the releases so that they can gather. And they have some, they, there's due diligence that they have to follow in, in terms of requesting um, release of those records. The other option though, is to work with the VSO uh, to submit what, what's referred to as a fully developed claim in which we're saying to the VA, hey, we'll, we'll collect all the information ourselves. We will develop the claim and we'll submit it with all the evidence we think will be necessary for you to adjudicate. Um, and in, in my experience, that typically is an easier route for the veteran be, because you as the veteran can collect your information yourself and provide it to us and we'll work with you to actually put together your fully developed claim. Um, but I just wanna make that distinction because again, you don't have to go through the VSO, you don't have to go through a third party organization to file a claim. You can file a claim directly but there are part there are there are organizations like the County Veteran Services Officer, the um, American Legion, various other organizations that can assist you in doing it. So those options are out, out there uh, in the belt for you. Thank you, Ed. Um, these next few questions will be great for either Ed or Richard to answer. We've had a few come in regarding unemployability and just getting some clarification on that. How do you apply for that? If they're rated um, at 90, for example, if they're rated at 90% disabled, but um, have 100% rate, should they try to get 100% disabled claim? A lot of veterans are just asking a little bit more about unemployability. Okay, so uh, I'll try to answer very high level because ultimately for individual unemployability, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna sit down and talk with the veteran services rep about what it is you're looking to do, okay? Because there are some caveats. Um, Individual unemployability gets you to 100% service connection, um, even though you, your, your actual disabilities may not rate 100%. Um, there are, we do get a lot of folks that come into our office and say, hey, I'm rated at um, you know, 70% for this, uh, but I'm individually unemployable, so I'm receiving 100%, but I'm interested in, in getting rated at, at 100%. So we'll go over the process with you. We'll, 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 we'll We'll review the, the caveats of doing so, uh, understanding, for example, that anytime that you um, 
submit a claim to be re-rated, it, you're not guaranteed it's gonna go one direction, right? So conversations like that are important. Um, the best answer I can give is because of the uniqueness of that program and each person's individual sort of circumstances, your best option is to give us a call and sit down and we'll go over your particular situation and we'll talk about the options and we'll try to give you the, we'll, we'll help you make the most informed decision you can. Ultimately though, as the veteran services office, we will, we will represent you in whatever uh, choice you wanna make. Is there a specific uh, benefit being unemployable, being labeled as unemployability? The biggest benefit of, of, of getting the IU is that it takes you to 100%, even though your disabilities themselves may not uh, add up to 100%. Um, the, I would say one of the potential downsides is that if you have a spouse, for example, and you would like to get them access to uh, via healthcare, Typically, that is for folks that are 100% through disability. Individual unemployability, individual unemployability will not get you there specifically. Um, from a monetary standpoint, though, generally, it, it, what it is is it gets you to 100%. Help, let me know if that answers the question. Um, if you are unemployable, how often do you have to be reevaluated? Well, you have to have a certain degree of disability rating in order to be able to get rated individual unemployability. So those actual disability ratings, depending on what they are, are subject to reevaluation uh, depending on, on, on the VA itself. So we do have folks, for example, that are uh, that may have like a 70% PTSD rating who um, do have reevaluations every two or three years. But if you are evaluated and you're not permanent and, and, and total, you can be reevaluated the individual unemployability itself is not necessarily reevaluated unless you want to go to work. And that's the other thing is that if you're on IU, it means that you're unemployable due to your disabilities. So if you do want to go back to work and you want to be involved in what we consider um, gainful employment, um, then you wouldn't be qualified for individual unemployability. If you're at 100% disability based on, on your service connection, you can still work and, and not put the 100% disability rating at, at risk. Thank you, Ed. I think this next question might be good for Kathleen. It's about the Veteran Readiness and Employment Program, formerly known as Vocational Rehabilitation. Um, we had just one participant who wants a little bit more information about that. Yeah, so um, so that the VA has, um, they used to be called Voc Rehab, and it's actually an employment program that helps veterans, um, you know, either get work experience um, or get connected to a job, or um, in terms of you're in school, it might, you might be um, working with them. They can sometimes add on additional benefits to continue into school. Um, so uh, if you are at least 10% service connected, you can apply for Voc Rehab. Um, you can either do that directly or you can go through the County Veterans Service Office. But again, it's an employment program. So the way you want to approach that is that like, hey, I want to be this, I want to be in this career and it requires this education or this experience and the, count, um, the counselor can work with you to develop a, a plan, an employment plan um, to help you get job ready and often connected to a job. Um, so it's a really nice program, pretty extensive. Um, we're planning a speaker series on that hopefully in the coming months. So we'll send out a flyer to that and we'll have a rep from um, Voc Rehab or Veteran Readiness come to talk with everybody. Um, but it's um, a super good program. I can, um, if anyone's interested in that, send me a text or email me and I have, um, I have a few flyers of, of basic information about it that I can send to you. And that was, that was all I had so far. And I yeah. wanted to just um, say real quick, um, we put, we threw them into the chat, but um, next Monday, a co some colleagues of mine are offering a speaker series on um, relationships in the time of COVID. So it's kind of strategies and ways to, um, you know, work on relationships um, in general, but I think it can be much more challenging since everybody's 
kind of stuck at home. So um, that's in the chat box. There's a flyer. The link and everything is included um, right onto that flyer. So if you wanted to join that next Monday from 1 to 2. And then there's another flyer on an enrollment event that our program's offering. So if you wanted to check in on VA healthcare eligibility, we have a team of people on those. There on the flyer, we have two additional days where we can help directly, you'll get linked up with a, a person right there and work on eligibility or like an application right on the spot. So um, that's in the link. And if you end up can't, you can't find it, just email me and I'll get all that information to anyone who's interested. Great. Thank you so much, Kathleen. I think, um, Danielle, you said that was possibly the last question. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, um, those were some great questions. Um, we'll be on for just a couple more minutes. So if anybody else has any further questions, please don't hesitate to um, put that in the chat function so we can get that answered before we um, end today. But again, here is all of our contact information. Um, if you need to go back to this slide, let us know, but I'm going to move on. Um, our next slide here um, is going to just show a couple upcoming webinars. Um, we're actually going to be doing the same topic um, um, tomorrow. So if you'd like to show up tomorrow, if you have some friends that want the want this information, um, either um, they can sign up for tomorrow's webinar um, or this one is going to be recorded and will be put on our website. Um, coming up here um, in just a couple weeks, um, we're doing a, another webinar with another college, Navigating the Stressors of Distance Learning. So far on the books, we have um, a Benefits 101 um, webinar coming up in March, um, also with another school as well. So um, there will be more webinars coming um, as well, and those all get posted to our website. You just um, Google CalVet, you click on the CalTap banner under the laptop, and scroll all the way down to the bottom, and it'll show all upcoming webinars, and then you can click on that archives button, and it'll show, um, it'll bring you to the page with all of the webinars that were previously recorded, and the um, the presentations like you're looking at right now. Um, okay, I'm not seeing any other questions being asked. So um, thank you guys so much for your time and for spending your morning with us. Um, if you need anything from us, reach out. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much. Deanna, would you mind going back to the page with everyone's contact information? Absolutely, there it is. And um, we did have one more question. I'm not sure if this is if this is one that any of us can answer. It sounds like a very VA specific question, okay. um, but their question is around the e benefits website. So the person is asking, why does VA keep telling us to use e benefits, which went away in August of last year, but then we are supposed to use VA.gov? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Kathleen can speak on that. It's a okay a specific VA question to me. Um, yeah, so I think sometimes like I think what's kind of happening is that they're trying to set up new websites and there's things that are still attached to old systems. So you'll find kind of sometimes duplicates. So for the most updated stuff, it's typically going on VA.gov that might reroute you to eBenefits. I know, for instance, um, someone was trying to look up their discharge papers and I saw that it rerouted them to e-benefits. So go through that, whatever route, the va.gov. Eventually, I think things are going to end up getting kind of solidified, but just the way in which that gets um, kind of rolled out can be really challenging because the system is so big. Um, so yeah, definitely can appreciate the annoyances by that. Um, but the most up-to-date for anything is going to be through va.gov, and that'll link you to various sites. So if you wanted to look up GI Bill benefits, there's um, uh, like requesting DD-214s is a route to go through that. So again, I'm going to throw it out there. Look on that. You're always welcome to contact myself or contact Ed or Rich. I think sometimes that individual help navigating it. I mean, that's one of the reasons we're here is because it can be really frustrating and exhausting. And so let us help you with it because we get it. If I can you know, make um, a process easier for you, I'm gonna definitely try to do that. So, um, but I appreciate you know, the annoyance of that. It's, I work at the VA, I get it. So, um, so yeah. 
the rollout, I think eventually will kind of solidify everything. It just is very slow. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, like Kathleen said, um, if you are starting to go through a process or filling out an application or can't find something, reach out to any of us, either to Kathleen, to um, any of the veteran service offices or to the links too, um, or to, to us at Caltap. So um, if somebody, if we can't answer a question or somebody you call can't, they're going to route you to someone who does know the information. So um, every single time we'll do that. So we will help you out. We're here for you. So I think that's pretty much it question wise. Um, that's it from this end. Okay, well, we just, again, wanna thank everyone for sharing their morning with us. We appreciate all of your time and hopefully we'll, we were able to get you guys some information that you didn't know before. So have a wonderful rest of your day and we will um, see you soon.